looking for. Ready to go. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, Brother Paul. It's good to have. Uh, Paul Triplett here with us, and uh, it's just me and Paul tonight, so glad that you're here. Hopefully there'll be some folks catch us on the uh, uh, the streaming service, but uh, welcome, brother. Thank glad, you, you're, glad you're with us. We're going to start sure. with, uh, I just used the same song sheet from Sunday, so that's why you see it like that. Okay, okay. So uh, we're going to sing When We All Get to Heaven as a beginning hymn. All right, here we go. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon His beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. All right. We sang Doris and Jerome, man. That's awesome. Man, we're having a little trouble with the Bluetooth thing. I don't know what's going on here. Well, I saw you online. Oh, uh, maybe we're still online. Have Lost a copy. Uh-oh. All right, it's okay. Even if we don't, we'll be good. Because it said something about a test. Uh-huh, and I, I changed it to prayer meeting, so we'll see if it, uh, I don't know. It's always something. Technology's good until it's not. Always a complication. Yep. It says live now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're on here. All right. Let's roll. Anyway, welcome Doris Jerome. Mr. Hi, Triplett. Paul. Yeah, so glad you're here. Uh, so just a few announcements. Um, first of all, you signed up to bring in some soup for Super Bowl. Uh, it's due, I, I can hear it, uh, in the first Sunday in February. Also, uh, the lunch punch is coming up, not this Friday, but Friday a week. And uh, so hope you can join us for that. The Smidek Retreat is this weekend, so remember those guys. Uh, Danielle, Tommy, and uh, Katie, and, and uh, uh, Timothy are leading that, so pray for them. Also, this weekend, uh, Debbie's dad's church, Marsh Road Baptist Church, is having a retirement service for him on Saturday at 3 o'clock, so uh, pray for that service. And I mentioned this on Sunday. Uh, I think uh, starting next week, we're going to have the prayer meeting come move it to like 5 o'clock. We're going to try 5 p.m. And because I want to be involved in, in uh, Awana and be a listener and, 
and hopefully uh, we can get some more guys that will uh, help us with. Uh, I'm doing some talking. Are you? Okay. Well, he's a good one. I, I love well, that. It, it, I, I would think that if I, he might. But well, that's, we'll see. That's, there's no pressure at all. <laughs> I just know I need to do it. And on the money. What's that? What's on the here. money? Well, uh, I tell you what, we'll triple your money. Oh, great. Yeah. But you're making now. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, triple nothing is still nothing, right? <laughs> right, right, right. All right, so uh, our devotion tonight is from John chapter 6, uh, beginning with verse 16 and verse 3, verse 22. Now, we've been working our way through the book of John, right? Mm-hmm. And we, we've noticed uh, the miracles that Jesus has done, and he's attracting big crowds. And the last time we were together, we, we did the... the the feeding of the 5,000, you know, with the little boy's lunch. And uh, and so what we begin to see in the story of Jesus is now uh, people are going to start falling away, right? He, he's start, gathered a crowd, but, uh, you know, he's uh, it's easy to draw a crowd when you're doing a lot of miracles and when you're feeding people. Uh, but when we start talking, the reality of his crucifixion is coming and things are going to start getting difficult and people are going to start falling away. So we're going to start seeing that. But in John chapter 6, beginning with verse 16, it says, When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The next day, the the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but they they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. Now, Capernaum is a place that was really Jesus's, uh, we call it home base, right? He kind of worked a lot from from this town. When Jesus was feeding the 5,000, it was uh, this little place called Bethsaida. You can see that on the map there. So really, uh, Bethsaida is east of Capernaum. And uh, about six miles Right, so when it said he'd gone three and a half miles, he's about halfway. And uh, you know, I, I, I've been fortunate enough to be on the Sea of Galilee. It's a pretty cool place, and uh, but it's uh, 600 feet below sea level. And I understand that in the night, a lot of times, as the temperature cools down, a lot of west winds start blowing across that lake. And uh, at least on that particular day. Uh, it, it said it became boisterous. It was it was hard to row. Uh, you know when they when they it says uh, when evening came, his disciples went down to the lake. Evidently, had gone inland uh, to feed the five thousand, and uh, they went down to the lake and they got into a boat. And uh, the language suggests that they might have been they might have been thinking that Jesus was coming, but he didn't come. So they set off for for Capernaum, and. Uh, it got dark. Have you ever been on the water in the dark? Only on a big On a big ship, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you've been on the boat, on a little boat, on a big thing of water in the dark, it's really scary. Uh, you don't know where you're at. Well, even on a big ship, it's eerie. Right. When yeah. you look, and you can't see anything, and, right. you're, and there's no land, no lights, no nothing. Yeah, so I can only imagine. Exactly. So it says a strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough and they had rowed for three or four miles, hadn't gone, what, about halfway and rowing against the wind is not an easy thing to do, right? And uh, so uh, 
they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water. Now, of all the things that you might not expect, you probably wouldn't expect that, right? Mark, when Mark records this event, uh, he says that they thought they had seen, they had seen a ghost, yeah. right? And uh, so uh, it's a frightening thing. They, right. And, and uh, so uh, they were frightened. And Jesus said to them, it's I, don't be afraid. I thought about those words today. That's, that's pretty cool, right? Uh, don't be afraid. And that's what he keeps telling us. And that's what he keeps telling us, right? It's, it's okay. I've, we've got this, right? There's nothing that's going to happen to you or me because we belong to Jesus that we can't handle together, right? Uh, somebody told me once, God plus one is a majority. So uh, he's, he's got you. And so uh, when, they, when they realized it was him, they were willing to take him into the boat, right? And... and uh, that's what we need to do. Whenever we get to a place where we're where we're afraid or we don't know what tomorrow holds, he's already in tomorrow. Uh, he's not afraid of tomorrow. He's not afraid of time. He's he's a god of time, right? So so don't be afraid. And immediately it says the boat reaches shore. Now how did that happen? I don't know. It's don't a need it's to a miracle. Know, right? We don't need to know, right? It's it's on a need to know basis, and you don't need to know, and I don't need to know, right? So. Uh, you know, when we're going through a difficult time, whether we're going to have surgery or whether uh, we have an unknown situation, it's okay. He's got you. And uh, immediately the boat reached the other shore. Now the next day, the crowd, again, the crowd's looking for him. Why are they looking for him? Maybe a free lunch. Maybe uh, a miracle or two. Uh, whatever reason. That, so when they didn't find him, they got in boats and they went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. And so this that's a real, really a simple passage. There's not a lot there, except what is there is, it's I, don't be afraid. So whatever is going on in your life or my life, uh, God has got you. He's gonna take care of you. Uh, I get to uh, to speak at uh, Debbie's dad's retirement uh, thing on Sun or Saturday afternoon. And I've been wrestling uh, well, what shall I talk about? And I think I'm going to use this passage as a basis. You know, anytime we're in transition, it's a scary time. He's transitioning from being a full-time pastor now to being retired. Now, he's not he's not retiring from serving. Right. He's just not going to be a full-time pastor anymore. It's going to be something a little different. It's going to be different. He's not going to be in charge, but he's still going to be a, uh, a church member, and he's... He, Trust me, he's still going to be serving and praying and doing whatever he can until God calls him home. So, uh, you know, I was thinking about uh, Joshua. Right? You think about when Joshua took over from Moses. The thing you read over and over again is be of good courage, be of good courage, be of good courage. You may not know what tomorrow holds, but Jesus does. So, so that's my encouragement for all of us is... Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God has got you. Okay. Uh, any other comment about that passage? Anything strike you about it? No, but it's perfect timing. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Okay. For uh, a friend of Drums. Okay. He's in hospice. Yep. I got your, your message. He's on my prayer list for tonight. And uh, exactly right. So. Uh, and Drums going to go visit tomorrow. So okay. maybe he can use. Yeah. Yeah, you say like this that. is what I, we talked about in church last night. Don't be afraid. He's He's got you. Mm -hmm. uh, my prayer is that, uh, that Lou does know the Lord and, and uh, he reaches out to him for, for strength. All right. So since the last time we met, I have like a million prayer requests. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to share those. Some of them are updated. And I'll give you the updates that, that I do have. And we'll just go forward from there. Uh, so all the way back on the 4th of January, a uh, request from Robin Murphy, you might remember this, her great niece in the hospital for two days with RSV. Hopefully she's out of the hospital now. I don't know that for sure, but uh, she's just a, a couple of months old. So a lot of respiratory issues uh, these days, it seems like. So let's pray for that young, small, young baby. 
a request from Shannon Enzenbacher, uh, a friend of hers, uh, uh, Heather and husband Kyle live in Arizona. Uh, she had uh, preeclampsia. Uh, she did have the baby. Heather is home as of the January 5th. Uh, the baby was still in the hospital and was going to be there for a month or two. So wow. pray for this uh, uh, newborn. Um, we got a request from the Yohos. Uh, uh, to pray for our brother-in-law's family at the passing of uh, his dad, uh, Davis Lawson. And uh, so they did have the funeral service and uh, it was a, a wonderful service. Continue to remember the prayer. Now we've been praying for a good while now for uh, Scott and Heidi Wright and their little girl, Claire. And Claire is going to go to the cardiologist tomorrow but you know, Claire is here tonight. She's is here she? at a one. So oh, great. I was so glad, great to see them. So that's an answered prayer. And pray for them as Claire goes uh, uh, to the cardiologist. Hopefully she'll get a good report and just keep her in your prayers. Uh, we had a prayer request from Alexa West. Uh, she was traveling uh, uh, around the 18th of January. And she's evidently, she's a little anxiety when she gets on the airplane. But I saw her on Sunday, so she got there and back, uh, and so God answered that prayer. Uh, one of our, our new families here at church, the, the Sadler family, uh, relatives of Diana, uh, Bobby Sadler uh, has been diagnosed with uh, nodular melanoma. He went to a doctor, saw about five doctors today, I think, wow. and he's having a PET scan uh, tomorrow, and uh, so pray for him. They think uh, he probably will have surgery and then uh, immunotherapy. So uh, I did get to call him yesterday and have prayer with him. Yeah. So uh, remember uh, Bobby as you pray, and Cindy, his his wife, and his daughter, and his daughter is is it Kelly? Kelly, that's yeah. right, Kelly. So. Remember them as you pray. Also, Diana had asked prayers for uh, Pastor Andy Ellers. Uh, his, his wife, uh, uh, actually, she, when she sent out the request, uh, uh, she said she was losing her batter, battle with cancer, and uh, uh, she did pass. So uh, remember that family uh, as you pray, as they uh, uh, grieve her loss. Uh, request from Diana for a 15 year old girl Alyssa uh, who was uh, kicked by a horse uh -oh. I just can't imagine in but, the face uh, wasn't it yeah. oh in the face yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I think she's uh, she's still on the ventilator as of uh, the 23rd of January uh, but I think she's uh, she's doing pretty good so in terms as well as she can go. So just keep Alyssa in your prayers. And Miss, Miss Doris was on our prayer list and she had her procedure and she looks good. So everything good? Uh, uh, everything went extremely well. Okay. We we'll just wait for the, for the results. Yeah. Okay. So I have a follow up okay. appointment in two weeks. Okay. So uh, if it's bad news, I'll probably hear something before then. If not, I'll You'll wait hear for about two it weeks. Then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So remember, but God right. has it either way. That's right. Amen. <laughs> He's got to be not afraid. That's right. Amen. And uh, from Debbie Robinson, uh, Sarah, you guys know uh, Sarah. Uh, she's having, she has a, a, a kidney stone. And she can't take any pain medication because she's nursing her newborn baby. So uh, just take, taking Tylenol, uh, probably going to have to have that, uh, what do you call that, lithotripsy when they blast yeah, the stone with the, uh, the sound waves. Yeah. So. Uh, it sounds like it's a large one. It's a, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, keep her in your prayers. So and then also for Lou uh, from Jerome, uh, who's with hospice care now, and, at home, uh, yeah. and uh, pray. And he has some confusion, I think. And so you're going to go see him tomorrow. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So we'll pray for that. Um, 
Also keep your uh, sister Jane uh, in our prayers uh, for her salvation and, and uh, uh, as also she uh, uh, grieves the loss of her husband. Uh, Billy Baxter, uh, our friend Billy, uh, January the 28th, Billy Baxter will be 101 years old. So we're planning to go see her uh, on Friday. So uh, pray for her. Uh, Nora Wright is in long-term care in Walkersville. As far as I know, she's doing well. I hope to get to see her this week. Helen Liller is doing better. <laughs> you know, it's always, I always say you have tisma. When you get to a certain yeah. age, you have tisma. Yeah. It used to be tis her hip. Now it's tis her knee. Uh -oh. so, uh, well, and I understand that because it's whatever screaming the loudest that's at right. you, that's exactly and then right. if that gets resolved a little, then the other one's screaming louder. So it's ah. whatever screaming the loudest. Amen. Right. So, uh, <laughs> but she's doing pretty well. I'm I'm glad to see her on Sundays and and uh, grateful for her. I talked to, uh, texted with Brother Dave Barrio today. Uh, he's still recovering from his back injury, but he's doing better. He says he's getting better every day. So we're grateful for that. Uh, G Champion sent us an email. Uh, her daughter Pam has a new uh, job in Raleigh, North Carolina, starting next month, and she's there trying to find a house to buy. So pray that God would open doors for that. Uh, also. Uh, her daughter Kathleen, uh, Kathleen's husband John, uh, his dad Billy Hardy uh, passed away earlier today. So we're praying for God to comfort uh, that family. Keep them in your prayers. Is G's husband? Um, yeah, as far as I know, he's still doing okay. okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I haven't heard anything otherwise recently. Okay. Um, Roy. Roy, yes. Roy, yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You're doing good. I'm, <laughs> uh, I got an email from Diana earlier today. She said she had stopped coughing, uh, not needed to take the cough syrup, but for some reason in the early hours of this morning, the cough woke me up. I've been coughing all day doing breathing treatments. She only has two days of antibiotics left, so let's pray that it all goes away and she's able to uh, uh, get rid of the, uh, the bronchitis. Also from Denise Bittinger, uh, said for tonight, please pray for my coworker Kendra. The doctors will be meeting tomorrow to review test results uh, since she's been in a medically induced coma for over a week now. So pray for that. And also from Diana, but you guys probably never met, haven't met Diana. Diana used to, uh, to come here, but uh, her, uh, I guess it would be her granddaughter gave birth to a little boy this week. Uh, it was a difficult birth. Uh, the baby is doing well, went home yesterday, but Megan uh, is hurting, has over 100 stitches, and there's concern for inspection or infection, so uh, she said prayers are appreciated. All right, so any other prayer requests from you guys? Go ahead. Our granddaughter, Marissa. Um, I don't know the technical word, but um, she's been in remission for five years with her kidney disease, mm -hmm. and um, she just tested at home positive for urine, I mean for protein in her urine, mm -hmm. and, um, but she went to the doctor yesterday, and in the office there was no protein. Oh, okay. So she went for blood tests today, so just hope it's not that, um, the kidney issues. I mean, she has type 1 diabetes, that's enough for her to handle. Oh, amen. And this week is exam week, and mm -hmm. so she even... A lot of stress. May, and boy, can that child have stress. <laughs> and stress, you know, affects it all It does, us, and so. that's what yeah. I was thinking, too, that maybe that it's just a temporary thing with the stress going on right now with the uh, exams and all. And she's a very motivated, very studious, wants to get yeah, good, good grades, grades, nothing maybe. like grandma. <laughs> um, and I can't relate to that as far as the stress and all about that. 
but it's real to her, mm -hmm. and it is real, Indeed. and um, just for her health, because God can choose to heal her. Absolutely. Uh, but it's hard to see a little one like that go through so much at such a young age. Amen. Amen. And teenage years for a girl, especially, are not easy anyway. That you can relate to. That I can relate to. Yeah. Wow. That part, yes. Yeah. When she comes to me about that kind of thing, I can relate yeah. to that. Amen. All right. Anybody else? And go ahead. Prayer from mom with all her losses that she's had here as of late. Mm. And I don't know, just it, everything gets straightened out and got a lot of friends with troubles here and there. And a few, one buddy that I work part time with, he's got drinking issues and just pray that he would let that be and let that go and turn it back over to God because years ago he used to come to AA uh -huh. but you know he just climbed back into the bottle and has been there ever since and yeah. life goes on you keep pouring the booze in the hole in your face you keep getting the same results so right you know, yeah yeah just pray that the Lord would guide him in a different direction amen amen absolutely and then as for the his boss Jeff that had almost bled to death a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I would just prayer for him because he's just got so much on his plate after losing his wife and then having that on top where he went to that doc procedure with the doctor and he almost bled out when he came home from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Came home from the procedure. So uh, All right. keep Jeff in our prayers. Please. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brother Jerome, you doing all right? Yes. Thank you, sir. Good. I pray he, he um, had the start of an infection, but as soon as he started oh, taking antibiotics, it uh, cleared up. Cleared right up. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. And Lisa and I predicted it before he realized it. <laughs> yeah, well, yes. Good call. Uh, yeah. Because it came about a little differently this time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't exactly the same as mm -hmm. it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. But um, you notice a change in. Well, when he says he's not hungry, that's one of the the start, the the start before he right. can feel anything else. And right. he did feel some discomfort in his left side. Right. But he said it was different because we both said, "Well, what about infection?" And uh, the next day he started feeling. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. All right. Okay, so we've been going through, uh, we've been praying through the Psalms, and we're Psalm 119, Ooh. and uh, so every, if you notice 100, Psalm 119 has sections, right? Yeah. Yeah. Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, A, Vav, and, all, and those are Hebrew letters, and each, in the Hebrew, the original Hebrew, each verse in that section starts with a letter that represents and to, this is Dalit. We would be the same as D in, in, uh, in English. So in the Hebrew language, every verse begins with a Dalit. Hmm. It's just a, uh, a, you know, a literary uh, tool that the author used. Why? I have no idea. But it's just, it's interesting. But, so we're going to just bow in prayer. I love hearing the, the kids from uh, from Moana. We're going to bow in prayer, and I'm going to read the Dallas section of, uh, of of Psalm 119, and let's just meditate on that, and then we'll uh, uh, we'll have prayer together, and then we'll close uh, our service with uh, in the garden. Psalm 119, verse 25. I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life according to your word. I gave an account of my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your decrees. Cause me to understand the way of your precepts, that I may meditate on your wonderful deeds. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Keep me from deceitful ways. Be gracious to me and teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. 
I have set my heart on your laws. I, I hold fast to your statutes, Lord. Do not let me be put to shame. I run in the path of your commands, for you have broadened my understanding. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful. I'm so grateful to come to you tonight, grateful for uh, the people that are joining us uh, here in my office, uh, Doris and Jerome and Paul, grateful for each one of them and uh, for those who may join the Facebook stream or even view it later, we thank you for all of those. And Father, we come to you tonight thinking about the, the passage there in John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, it's I, be not afraid. Um, Father, I know that there are times in our lives when we are afraid. There are times in our life when we don't know what tomorrow holds. And it may be uh, because of our health or the loss of a loved one, or it may be uh, something else that is uncertain. And Father, we thank you for, for loving us so much that you say, it's okay, I've got you. Uh, and I know, Lord, we don't know who about tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow, and we lean into that, and, and we pray uh, for each one of those things. And every time I think about that song, I, <coughs> I think about Miss Sunny, and uh, uh, I think about uh, the fact that she loves that song. I know that she's away now, and uh, she's, uh, she's ministering to her daughter, didn't mention Lynn uh, in the prayer request, but she's also in our prayers, and we lift her up for healing and grace, and uh, Father, we pray for her, for, for Matt and Ben, and traveling mercy for Miss Sunny, and pray for uh, Richard, and, and uh, uh, you know, just uh, that you would bless him, and Lydia, uh, and just... Uh, Give them what they need uh, uh, to make it while Miss Sunny's there away uh, with Lynn. And I pray for that. And uh, I pray for uh, uh, Robin's great niece. I pray that uh, we haven't heard uh, anything about that. And I pray that she's much better. Hopefully she's home. And uh, Father, that you would just provide your healing for that. For Shannon's friend, uh, Heather, and her new baby, uh, Father, uh, and as far as we know, the baby is, is okay, but maybe still in the hospital. We just pray for the very best uh, for, for, uh, for Heather and Kyle and their new baby, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, for comforting D.L.'s family at the passing of his dad. His dad was a, a, a great Christian man, uh, one of a kind, really. And I just thank you for him and uh, bless D.L. And, and their family at, at his passing. Give them comfort and peace. For the Wright family, uh, uh, you know, uh, especially for Claire, for healing for her. So great to see them here tonight. I pray that you just give them peace as they talk to the cardiologist tomorrow, Lord. And I pray all would be well for Claire and encourage Heather especially, Lord. And uh, I pray that, that, that you will be uh, receive your peace and grace there in that moment. Uh, I pray for Bobby Stadler and... and uh, uh, Father, we know that uh, uh, he's seen several doctors and, and uh, has been diagnosed with this melanoma. I pray that you'd give him your peace, Lord, that you'd lay your healing hand upon him. And uh, if it's your will, Lord, just deliver him from that. But uh, otherwise, we pray for the effectiveness of, of treatment. And if he has to have surgery, but guide the hands of those that are, that are doing that surgery. Uh, I pray for uh, Pastor Andy and his family, the passing of his wife. And we're so uh, grateful to know that she uh, was your child and uh, so difficult to lose someone you love. And, uh, you know, I know a, a pastor is really dependent upon his wife as I am. And, and I just pray uh, for your grace, for your peace, for your provision for Pastor Andy and, and to all those, those uh, that love Tanya. Uh, and uh, I pray your blessings there. Uh, for Miss Diana, as we prayed for Alyssa, who uh, you know was, had, was kicked by that horse, and uh, I pray, Lord, for uh, recovery there and for blessings there and uh, for healing. Uh, I pray for Miss Diana. She uh, continues to battle this uh, bronchitis. She's on a couple days of antibiotics left, Lord, and I just pray that uh, that you would miraculously heal her, that take that cough away, that uh, 
uh, that she doesn't have to deal with that anymore. And I pray that you give her peace. Thinking about her mom as well, uh, Callista, uh, for for wisdom for the doctors as uh, you know uh, they're wrestling with uh, her situation. And uh, I just pray, Lord, the, the very best there. Thank you for uh, bringing Miss Doris through her procedure, Lord. Uh, and just continue to give her your peace. I know that your, her faith is in you, and I just pray for uh, just a very positive result and, and just uh, uh, grant her your grace and peace and healing. For, uh, for Sarah Robinson, Lord, uh, I know that she's in pain. She has kidney stones. And Father, uh, I pray if it's your will that you would take those away. I pray for the effectiveness of treatment and I know that she's not able to have pain meds because she's nursing her new baby, and we're grateful uh, that the baby's doing well, continue to guide her steps. Um, for Lou, uh, Jerome's uh, former supervisor, home with uh, hospice care, and Lord, I just pray that you'd give him your peace, the peace that passes understanding, that he would uh, put his trust in you, Lord, and we know that every day is grace, and I just pray, Lord, for, uh, for your will to be done in this life. Uh, I pray for Billy Baxter, grateful for her. Uh, she's doing so well, and, and she's had a, a big birthday coming up, and I uh, just continue to bless Billy as she uh, is there in Homewood and bless those who care for her, as well as for Nora and Miss Helen Lillard, Lord, for, for the best for them. I'm grateful to hear that Brother Dave Barrio is doing better and, and uh, continue to heal him more and bring him back to us according to your will. Uh, Father, for... Uh, She's family, uh, her daughter, who uh, Pam, who's starting a new job. And I just pray, Lord, for your provision as she seeks uh, a place to live. And I pray that it's a good, uh, a good fit there uh, in Raleigh. Uh, also for, uh, for John's family uh, at the passing of his dad, I pray for your grace and peace there uh, at the moment. And as she says, I know that God answers prayers and he knows what is best in all things. So so bless in all of those situations. Uh, Father, I pray for uh, Denise Bittinger's friend, Kendra, uh, who's been in a medically induced coma for over a week. Uh, I pray, Lord, for the very best for her, the medical folks. And Lord, I just pray that, that she could be able to come out and, and regain her health according to your will. Uh, Father, for uh, uh, Diana's uh, granddaughter, Megan, uh, uh, and for the baby Preston, I, I know that he went home yesterday. It's good. Uh, but bless Megan as she recovers. And I pray, Lord, that, uh, that, you'll, uh, that you'll remove the pain and that she would not have any infection and, and, and uh, get well quickly. Uh, I pray for Marissa. Lord, you know the situation that Marissa's in. I just pray that you just give her your peace. Father, that you remove any of the stress from her. Father, that her, her health issues uh, would be taken care of according to your will. I pray for Marissa and her, her health and blessing there. For, uh, for Paulette Triplett, uh, she's uh, suffered many losses here in the last few uh, months and years. And I pray that you just comfort her, just give her wisdom. Uh, pray for Jeff, his friend. Uh, you know the troubles that he's had. And I uh, just pray for uh, uh uh, rest, rest, restoring and health and peace for him. Uh, Father, perhaps there are others that we're thinking about tonight. Uh, and if I've left anybody out, I know, Lord, that you know each one. And I just pray for the very best for each one of us. Uh, thank you for Awana, the opportunity. Uh, we hear our young people uh, uh, celebrating and learning scripture. We're grateful for each one of those. Bless uh, our church family and uh, each one of those and, and bring us a, to your house this coming Lord's Day uh, that we would give you praise and glory and save those that are lost, the uh, people that we're praying for that need to know you, Lord. Uh, we're just praying for their salvation. Uh, forgive us of the times that we've fallen short, Lord, and may we just cling to you and to your word. We know that you have our best uh, in mind and that you'll guide our steps all the way. And we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. All right. So our closing song will be somewhere. Garden. It is in the garden. 
And I have extra copies here somewhere. I have That's my of, mother's favorite song. Is yeah. it really? All right. Yes. I tend to cry when it's a... Well, that's all right. Uh, you certainly are entitled to cry. If I could find the other copies, <laughs> I'd give you one. Uh, I'm going to see if I can uh, walk through my papers again. Hmm. I'm a noted preacher. Uh, let's see, that's not there. Throw this away. I didn't throw them away. Hold on. I bet this looks good on. There it is. Is that it? Nope, that's nope, a different that's one. That's not it. That's all right. <laughs> that's okay. Oh. Of course, when I make the copies, then I'll find all the rest of them. <laughs> that's sure. good. I've done that more times than I can count. Well, I'll tell you, no this more. Is all good. All right. Here's
so still there then. I don't operate that. So I'll sit still. I don't know how to operate that contraption. No. Oh, Clark, Clark Beal was on there. <laughs>